Well, if you're a longtime fan of Interview Magazine, you may be familiar with the name Richard Bernstein, the artist behind some of its most memorable covers. Bernstein was also a prolific artist, and I recently had a chance to meet someone who is not only keeping Bernstein's legacy alive, but also introducing his work to a wider audience. This was Michael J. Fox. Yeah, a young Michael. Ron Duguay. You have Isabella Johnny, who was a French actress. You have Farah. What you're seeing is the original artwork for the cover of Interview Magazine issues between 1972 and 1989. All done by Richard Bernstein who designed a whopping 189 covers for Andy Warhol's interview magazine, which Warhol helmed from 1969 until his death in 1987. This Richard was commissioned by the Robert uh, Kennedy Library. Uh, this debuted in 1993, and the Kennedys came to his Chelsea Hotel apartment for the unveil of it. Rory Trippin is Bernstein's nephew and head of his late uncle's estate. He showed us pieces of art left behind by his uncle, which are stored in the basement of Trippin's parents' home in upstate Dutchess County. And while Bernstein is best known for his interview magazine covers, Trippin says he had a long career in fine arts. Starting in 1965 when he was doing the Kennedys, and then later on after Andy had passed, he went back to his love of fine art painting. And he was really a pioneer as far as, you know, digitally created artwork that he had started in the early 1980s as well. Bernstein was one of the first artists to use a standalone computer called the Quantel paint box to create a portrait of David Bowie in 1983. Richard would always petition to have David Bowie be on the cover of Interview Magazine. I'm not sure the exact story, but Andy wouldn't put Bowie on the cover. So uh, Richard said, you know, I'm going to do it myself. And so Richard, using the Quantel paint box, did a portrait of David Bowie that appeared in his book in 1984 called Megastar. Um, and so that's really the first digitally created pop art uh, portrait of that time. And later used it to create album covers for Grace Jones. In 1992, Bernstein made history as one of the first artists to exhibit his computer-generated artworks to the public, like this digital portrait of Elizabeth Taylor. That's Elizabeth Taylor um, as Cleopatra. And he, you know, pixelated her crown and, um, you know, I. I this is one of my favorite pieces that Richard ever did. But it was his cover art for Interview Magazine that put him on the map, a spotlight coveted by the stars at the time, a magazine run by his friend Warhol, who was already a star in the art world. It was during Bernstein's first solo exhibition in 1965, a writer for the Village Voice, who was close to Warhol, told him he just had to meet this talented kid doing amazing pop art. Andy came to Richard's show, and Richard and Andy, they kind of hit it off uh, right from there. Andy actually asked Richard if he would be in one of his movies, because Richard was actually a very handsome man. <laughs> so <laughs> Richard declined, but uh, their friendship formed from there. Bernstein died of AIDS complications in 2002. In 2016, Triffin started cataloging the works his uncle left behind that went way into the thousands. Now Richard left behind photographs. He left behind these paintings, the interview magazines, slides film, uh, I mean, you name it, <laughs> there was a lot of it, but um, it's really, you know, it's been a labor of love, and it's been a tremendous learning experience for me as well. Now, Rory Trifon is working with Interview Magazine's publishers on the 50th anniversary of his uncle's first cover. That's coming in May. Then in September, Bernstein's works will be shown alongside Andy Warhol's during an ex exhibit at the Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh.